So could you walk to Jefferson from where the levee broke? Uh, uh, if you had walked across, you had to come across the bridge, but as you walked across the bridge, Jefferson Parish would turn you around. If you was over here and you could literally walk to Gretna, when you got to that line, if you was black, you had to stop. And they made it, and they made it clear, no niggas allowed. And nobody is saying nothing. So this year here, this is going to be one of the things that we're going to make sure that the whole world know what happened. This type, of, this type of racism is tolerated in America, then it, it's true what some people say. And American government should own it, and all the American population should own it, own up to it. And that is, it's two Americas. It's one for your rich and white. And the other one for your poor and uh and and uh, minority. And if it is that kind of America, a two-tail America, if it is that, then we know who is living the American dream, and we also know who is living the American nightmare. What was that red stuff you put in there? Oh, that was uh. Oh, uh, crab ball. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm doing for, uh, for our anniversary. I'm, uh, right now I'm broiling some shrimps. Then I'm broiling some, uh, oh, some potatoes wow. and uh, corn and, uh, and carrots for our vegetarians. <laughs> you know, nothing else in it. <laughs> oh, this is the veggie part. Yeah. Oh, good for you. So, what's this called again? This is a Louisiana crab bro. This is one of the things that we are taking on the road. To help raise the capital that is needed to uh, help the fishermen in this area to recover, to help uh, uh, the, uh, create jobs. You know, through this, we open to, uh, to employ 50 people and all facets of this, uh, of our catering company. So again, if anybody listen to this, if they need uh, a event to cater, you know, uh, please contact us. Because this is another one of the adventures that we are going off into now. See, this is uh, our anniversary is basically not closing, but the beginning of the closure of the relief effort. But it's the beginning also of our new phase. That's the rebuilding phase, the emergency preparedness phase. You know, how can we avoid this from happening again? How can we address poverty in America? How can we address crime and all the social ills that entails crime? How can we how can we address them? How can we find some solutions for it? That's the phase that we are moving in now. And I, I think we are qualified to do it because I see uh, some of the brightest minds uh, in America coming here and uh, volunteering at Common Ground. So again, I believe if we would come together, you know, and work with the people, you know, and work with them, that's what those who want to uplift themselves. You know, if, uh, for those who don't want to uplift themselves, then I believe those are the ones that Christ was talking about when he said the poor are going to be with you always. You know, but those who want to live in a, in a rich community, and, and by rich I don't mean monetarily rich. I mean a socially rich community. You know, we can build these. You know, we have the ability to build these type of communities. And this is the next stage for Common Ground, to try to build those, uh, this type of community. If we continue to uh, receive the blessings of the Most High, we have... Uh, we have purchased this development. This is uh, 350 units, you know, and we can build that sustainable and that rich community right here. When you were a young man, did you ever think that you would see these 
uh, your type of dreams come true like this? When I was an old man, I didn't think. <laughs> uh, something that I've been uh, trying to do all my life. The only thing I've just been met with is uh, is uh, people who never had the belief in themselves. You know, most black people in America don't believe in themselves. You know, they don't believe in themselves as a people. They might say about how much they care about their self and their family. But when you get beyond the self and family, they don't give a damn about each other. You know, and that's what got to, that's what we got to address. We got to get past the church or the club or the neighborhood and start once again loving ourselves as a people. You know, and once we start loving ourselves in, as a people, then there's so many things we can do. You know, uh, right now uh, we kill we kill ourselves at a rate that's equal to the death going on in Iraq. You know, something has to be done. You know, America done created this problem. You know. Uh, when I was living in California, I was uh, I was the executive director of uh, one of the oldest uh, prison outreach activist group in America, Prisoners' Rights Union. And uh, as the executive director, uh, our organization, along with others, uh, had Tom Hayden. Tom Hayden, who was a, a state senator, had him to commission a study on uh, crime in California and, uh, and, and in prisons. Uh, it was uh, a professor from uh, Harvard who conducted the study. I believe his name was James Gillian. And, uh, his opening uh, remarks and his and the summary of his report stated that outside of uh, outside of war, uh, America jails and prisons is the most. I mean, uh, the jails and prisons is the most violent environment in America. Outside of war, so we take and we have been taking many young blacks incarcerating them on misdemeanors offenses, placing them in the most violent environment that they could ever face outside of war and expect them to come out, you know, and be reformed citizens. And it haven't worked. You know, so now we have to talk about how we gonna deal with this social this social phenomena that exists in our community. How can we as a people, if the government don't want to help us, how can those who stand for peace and justice help us save our community? You know, and that's the next step that we are moving in now. Well, Malik, it's uh, it's uh, something to be done here again. When the last time I came to uh, St. Mary's, there were four light bulbs burning, and and there was no water and. And uh, now they're filtering water, and places lit up like a Christmas tree. And that was just uh, spring break. That was just in March. So it's really amazing to see things uh, develop. Being, uh, and again, this is being done in the richest nation on earth. You know, and there wasn't no reason for people to have to live in the uh, manner that they had to live during the spring break. You know, it was. It just so. Uh, Again, how much our government truly care for the least fortunate, you know, but they persevere, you know, and at night, well, we have got it out over a thousand homes.